Great news. It's Halloween, the most wonderful time of the year. And to celebrate, I've been watching loads of spooky movies like A Quiet Place, The Thing, Get Out, and, well, Halloween, three of them at least. Uh, here's the thing, though. Even though I love, 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 love Halloween, I am in actuality a gigantic wimp. If you saw a horror movie and you left the theater thinking that it wasn't scary at all, you can be assured that I spent that entire runtime as just a giant ball of stress. Uh, all of which brings me to a fun new study with a bit of a wacky headline. Testing human volatile organic compounds as tools for age classification of films. Put another way, researchers are claiming that it's possible to judge what rating a movie should have based upon how much isoprene is in the air, since humans release more isoprene when they're stressed out. Skeptical? Yeah, you, you should be. Uh, but the results are still pretty interesting. Uh, the researchers hooked up a mass spectrometer to a movie theater's ventilation unit, allowing them to tell uh, every 30 seconds or so how much isoprene people released while watching one of 11 different movies over the course of 135 screenings. They found that isoprene levels correlated to various film ratings. So a movie rated R, for example, would make humans release much more isoprene than a movie that is rated PG. They use that information to create a model that might be able to categorize the movies accurately based upon uh, isoprene le levels. The researchers say that this will improve the movie rating system since currently it is subjective, whereas this is objective, a measurement that you can't actually argue with. That's the point when reading this that I pretty much just lost it. So let's talk about what's wrong with the study. Uh, first of all, they didn't go into this with the hypothesis that isoprene would correlate to movie ratings. They used the mass spectrometer not just to test isoprene, but to test more than 60 different compounds, all of which are things that humans release. Uh, and then they picked out the one that most closely, closely showed what they were looking for. This is something I've talked about in previous videos. It's something called p-hacking. Uh, it should only be used in preliminary studies, if at all. Uh, and that's exactly what this is. This is a preliminary study. Uh, because when you're looking at more than 60 different compounds, yeah, you have a pretty good chance of finding one that does what you want it to do just by random chance. So a follow-up is going to need to be done in which researchers only look at isoprene to confirm that the first study wasn't just a statistical blip and to make sure that the model they created actually, you know, works and continues to correlate with the currently established rating system. Another issue is that this is not, in fact, an objective measure at all. This is something that researchers in other fields often rightfully call out in the social sciences. Just because you have quantified something doesn't mean that you've made it objective. Humans made the subjective decision to look at stress levels as a way to determine what age should or should not experience a movie. That's just as subjective as determining that stress may be fine, but certain ages shouldn't be specific, shouldn't be subjected to specific scenes like bloody violence or graphic sex. And if you're going to use this to determine ratings, then your test audiences are going to subjectively experience stress in different levels. Isoprene is released in part due to people squirming in their seats. Does that mean that a particularly cringy episode of The Office should be rated X? Again, th these are subjective choices you have to make. It's a pernicious myth that we can emotion-proof our lives through science. No matter what, with just about every field besides mathematics, and even then, maybe, uh, you're falling back on humans who are making subjective decisions. The secret, at least in this case, isn't to come up with a better algorithm. It's to actually study the potential negative effects of scenes of sex and violence and stress on children of certain ages. And then, you know, actually stop idiot parents from dragging their eight-year-olds into Deadpool 2 anyway. Seriously, that's, that's something I saw. Uh, that happened. And those kids are either going to be scarred for life or super fun at parties. Let, uh, probably both.